It's time to dump your old linear amplifier because Class D is here to stay. That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delicello with Audioholics. I'm going to take a lot of heat for this video, no pun intended. But I think it's a well-warranted topic that we need to discuss is a trend that I've been noticing. And some of you audiophiles, just you're reluctant to embrace new technology. And I'm here to kind of show you why you should be. It's much like the analogy of going from a internal combustion engine, an ICE engine, to an EV. Right now, EVs are super expensive, but they are the wave of the future. There's just more performance advantages to having a EV as you guys can see with the acceleration uh, numbers from Tesla. But anyways, I don't want to digress. I just want to use a quick analogy. So I collected some measurements from amplifiers I, removed, I uh, measured over the years, and I wanted to show you a comparison between not necessarily great linear amps, but expensive, prestigious linear amps versus a really good linear amp design, and then versus a mediocre Class D and a really good Class D. And then you guys could decide based on the measurements that I'm showing you. So the first one I would say I would start off with is, I know uh, Class D amps have a negative stigma uh, because years ago they were mostly used for car audio, they were used for subwoofers. It wasn't until about 10, 12 years ago that we really started seriously looking at them as full range amplifiers. One of the first ones that I reviewed was from a company called Axiom Audio. It was their eight-channel A1400-A. And although there were problems with the amp, you have to commend them that they were embracing new technology. And they were offering an eight-channel amplifier that was a legit 200 watts a channel times eight all channels driven. But it wasn't a perfect amplifier. And I'll show you here. When I was measuring the FFT at one kilohertz at full power, you can see there's a lot of harmonics in this amplifier. It's not a horrible measurement as it looks because it is at full power, but you, you can see the third order harmonic is about 80, 85 dB below the fundamental. That's not a great result. And then there's a lot of residuals above 10 kilohertz. Then you look at their power sweep that I ran. This is power versus distortion. And you can see, even though it's giving you lots of power, the distortion rises greatly above about 10 watts. And it's still low, 0.02%. It's obviously probably not audible under anything but lab conditions. But it's still, this is not truly what you can get with the best linear amplifiers. And then I look at the SNR. This is the signal to noise ratio, how quiet an amplifier is. Generally speaking, 80 dB at one watt or higher is really is good. Above 90 is really good. And 100 is just stellar, exceptional anything above 100. This is at one watt. I compare all the noise figures of amplifiers I test at one watt. That way, there's not a disadvantage for one amp being more powerful than the other. You can basically compare apples to apples. So this is actually a decent measurement comparable to a really good uh, linear AB. But here's another problem with the older Class D designs is they, are not, they were not load invariant designs, meaning the impedance of the amplifier caused frequency response changes depending on the load it was driving. It was interacting with the load, whether it was a four ohm load, an eight ohm load, or an open circuit. So you can see the frequency peaking here with this amplifier. Um, it's definitely not ideal. This amplifier was really more suited for four ohm loads than eight ohm loads. So this amplifier, because of this, can make different speakers sound differently. So the amplifier is, is not as transparent as it can be because the frequency response varies based on the load impedance. So that's definitely not state of the art. But again, we're talking over 12 years ago. So commend companies for embracing new technology back then. So then I look at a really expensive Pass Labs amplifier. Now this thing was a beast. It was heavily biased into class A. This is a linear amp, AB above maybe about 20 watts, I think. Um, heavy runs like a space heater. This thing would warm up my room, $11,000. And you would think this thing would be stellar. But here, if you look at the FFT, when I'm driving it at rated power, and you see really mediocre. This is some of the worst results I've seen um, behavior of an amplifier 
at full rated power. You could see that even the uh, carrier is kind of distorted. And then there's a DC offset that's, that's happening at below 20 Hertz, not a great design despite the prestige of the brand. And it kind of took me by surprise when I saw that measurement, then I looked at the power sweep and really above below a hundred, oh, uh, below a hundred Watts. It was very low distortion. I mean, I know past labs prize himself on the first watt and to their defense, when I measured the FFT at one watt, it was super clean. And you could see below a hundred Watts driven here, really good result. But then you see the distortion rising drastically, especially when you get towards, you know, 300 Watts again, even close to clipping. I mean, it's still a little over 300 watts. You're still under 0.05%. That's really low. So I don't want to bash this amplifier. I actually really enjoyed listening to this amplifier. I didn't feel like it was a neutral amplifier, but I did like kind of the warm sound that it got. The only real complaint I had about this amp was when I was driving it really hard with my old status AT speakers that dipped down to two ohms with bass intense music, the power supply would run out of gas. Wasn't a problem with the amplifier itself. It was the actual power supply was a limiting factor. But then you look here at the signal to noise ratio, and this is a good measurement, 88 dB at one watt. That's, you don't hear any hiss when it's that quiet. That's really darn good. But then I wanna show you a class A amplifier, the brand class A. This amplifier was the um, CT2300. And forgive my sampling rate on this FFT. I think I had it at a low sampling rate. That wa That's why the one kilohertz looks fatter than it should. But this amp was half the weight, half the price, similar power output as the past labs. But the distortion profile was much better. You could see the, the third order harmonic was about you know, 85 dB below the fundamental. The really high frequency artifacts are not there. This is a better measurement than we saw with the Axiom amplifier the class D. So the class A is a linear amp, just like the past labs. I'm just showing you a good design versus a really good linear design, which you could see the kind of results we get. I like this power versus distortion curve from the class A amplifier. You can see the distortion remains fixed and constant at about 0.004% all the way to the knee of the curve right before it starts clipping. That is a beautiful result. This amplifier sounded stellar. No matter what speaker load I drove, the frequency response did not change. That's the one advantage that most linears have over the bad class D designs. And then the signal to noise ratio, look how quiet that is. You know, 92, 93 dB one channel, 94 dB another channel at one watt. That's super quiet. Really uh, impressed by that. But now it brings me to an amplifier that I'm currently reviewing, the one that's right behind me, right there. You're seeing that amplifier right there. I just finished the bench test on it. This amplifier from NAD, it's the M23. It's a Purify Class D, 200 watts into 8 ohms, 380 watts into 4 ohms, two channels driven. This thing is so low in distortion that I had to change my test fixture to accurately measure it. I had to cut my leads really short. I had to take off the magnetic alligator clips on my test leads because it was adding distortion um, from the inductance of that. So let me show you some measurements here. This is the FFT at one watt. I couldn't even measure any residuals. Look how clean that is. And I have a really high sampling rate on this to try to get any residuals at all. This is probably the quietest. It is definitely the least distortion I've ever seen in a one watt FFT, regardless of amplifier price. Now this amplifier is, it's like under $4,000. It's not cheap, but it's not an $11,000 pass lab amplifier. Now this is what blows me away. This is that full rated 200 watts an FFT of one kilohertz. Look how low the third harmonic is. It's a, at a minus 113 dB. That is at the limit of my audio equipment. So my audio analyzer, my $40,000 HDMI analyzer is about at this distortion threshold. And this is the amplifier at rated power and it's not nasty. At 113 dB down is, you know, 40 dB better or 30 dB better than most linear ABs when I measure them under the same test scenarios. Now here's the interesting thing. When you do a frequency response, this is at no load, eight ohms and four ohms. The frequency response does not change. This is a true load invariant amplifier. 
Unlike the Axiom amplifier that was frequency peaking, as you can see there, the NAD is not doing that at all. What this means is this amplifier is gonna perform the same no matter what speaker load it drives. It's gonna be very dependable, very neutral. It's not gonna change the sonic characteristics based on the speaker load it sees because the output impedance is so low, the feedback loop is so tightly controlled that you don't change frequency response no matter what load you're driving. That's what the very best linear amplifiers do. That's what the biggest advantage has been for years for good linears over a class D is they weren't able to do that until now. And then and Purify is not the only example of this. There are other really high performance modules from Hypex, now from Pas uh, Pascal, as well as ICE that should perform similarly. Although I think the Purify is still probably the lowest distortion game in town. Now look at this SNR rating. I've never measured an amplifier at one watt produce 103 dB signal to noise ratio. That's just mind blowing, super dead quiet. It's almost like comparing um, the black levels of an OLED display to an LCD, right? It's just that much difference and that much darker, that much quieter. So when you have an amplifier that's really quiet, you get to extract all the details of it and you increase your dynamic range as well. So again, look at the form factor of this amplifier. This is something you could pick up at one hand. It doesn't get hot, it's beautiful, as opposed to this, which is a work of art. The Pass Lab amp is a work of art, but that thing will give you a hernia moving it and it'll warm up your room. And the distortion is nowhere near as good in that Pass Lab amp. There's no doubt about it that if I still had that amp in my possession and I was going to set up an AB test scenario, there's no doubt in my mind that you would not hear a difference between these two amplifiers. And that's actually a very interesting experiment. What I'm gonna do in the near future is I'm gonna be doing listening tests on this M23 after I give you my full bench test report. I'm gonna to try to compare it to some of the amps I have in here. I have the really good Anthem STR amplifier, which is every bit as good as that class A amplifier that I showed you before. And I'm going to compare, you know, if see if I can hear a difference on my Revels. I've got Paralistons downstairs. So I've got professional grade level speakers. So I could really discern the differences between these amplifiers, if there are any. I mean, and when you get to this level of transparency, you're splitting hairs when an amplifier measures that good. But the real advantage of Class D is it runs much cooler. It's 90 to 95% efficient as opposed to a class AB that's maybe 60 to 70% at full power, but much lower at lower power. So you're wasting a lot more heat on a linear AB amplifier. They have to be very big because of the heat sinks. And when you really think about it, when you're starting to embrace these higher channel counts in Atmos systems, when you're going beyond 11 speakers, 13 speakers, 16 speakers, up to 32, it's kind of ridiculous to try to do that with linear amplifiers. You just can't get the channel density that you can with a class D. Now, the argument some people are going to say is, well, these class D amplifiers are really expensive. They're supposed to be cheaper than linear ABs. That's not true. That's a misnomer. There's a lot of technology that goes behind these amplifiers between the circuitry that they use to do the class D amplification, the feedback, topology, all that stuff. But most importantly, that SMPS power supply, when you have a switching power supply, it costs big money to make one that's really quiet, one that's efficient, and one that's dependable, one that's not going to blow out in a year. Because a lot of these cheap SMPSs will burn out quickly. So it's really, there's a lot of factors here, especially because this is still a maturing technology. But I see it as a wave to the future. As we keep going higher and higher in channel counts and we get into active speakers, there's really no reason anymore to hold on to linear amps unless you just like the old fashioned muscle cars, because that's really the analogy that I see at this point. And in fact, my primary theater room has all class D amplification. It's all Pascal modules. And I'm slowly and surely sh shifting away from linear amps to class D in virtually every one of my systems. So you just saw it right here. You just saw state of the art measurements that pushed the boundaries of my test gear that's how good this amplifier is. I've never measured another amplifier, linear or class D, that came close so far. So this kind of just put me on that mindset that it's time for you guys to embrace class D and get rid of your old biases and what you think you know about these amplifiers because it's come a long way, my friends. So guys, if you like this video, please thumb it up. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com 
slash audiohawks. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to suggest video topics or you just want some advice. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.